somebody much brighter than me said that death is not the opposite of life. Mm. Death is the opposite of birth. Mm. And that's a very, very wise thing to bear in mind. <clears throat> that the moment we are born, we start a relationship with our destination. It's preordained. No exceptions are made. <laughs> so, <laughs> why do we avoid thinking about it so assiduously? Um, I probably have a slightly different relationship with death than most of you because I was here long before most of you. <laughs> and I was a child of World War II. And World War II was super saturated with death. Right? They were the gold stars in the windows that reminded me of the loss. My grandparents were being turned into bars of soap in the concentration camp. It was all around, right? but it was only the dying part. Nobody questioned anything else about it. It was just death. I remember in late 44, beginning of 45, being very concerned and going to my father and saying, Dad, I hear the, the war may be over soon. He said, yes. I said, but then there'll be no news. <laughs> he assured me that no, there would still be news. I knew he was lying. <laughs> and of course, there was news, and death disappeared. Just vanished. I was... Uh, bright enough to know that something was wrong. And I got very concerned that in school, they were not teaching us the most important subject. If we were all going to die, shouldn't they be teaching us what it was, what it was like, how you got there? Nothing. <laughs> this concern stayed with me. In high school, I made noises about, you know, fine, advanced trigonometry. What am I going to do with that? <laughs> but I really wanted to know what death was, how I got there, what was going on. So I asked, why is it not being taught? And uh, very concerned teachers called my parents in and <laughs> said, you know, He's reading Jean-Paul Sartre and Albert Camus, which to them explained everything. <laughs> this continued until, oh, about seven, eight years ago, I was at the uh, Sun Valley Film Festival, and I met Clara Hendon, who became my producing partner, because we discovered we both had this pet peeve. Where was death? And so we joined forces and made a sizzle reel on something called the Death Project. And it was uh, based on the fact that my father, a very intelligent, intellectual man, had refused to consider death in any way. And so when it finally came, it took him by surprise, and it was not a pretty sight. Mm -hmm. I went home that night, and I looked in the mirror, and I said, I'm not going to do that to myself. I'm not going to do that to my children. And so I set about trying to learn as much as I could. And we made a sizzle reel about that. And it was marvelously received. You know, all the ancients said, ooh, ooh, this is good. This is the best sizzle reel we've seen in years. And we came very close, but each time, like HBO was right poised on the diving board and then said, yeah, but it's about death. It's about death. How do we 
how do we go to our boss and say, we greenlit a movie about death? That's why I'm so jealous of Scott. <laughs> because he's done it. And it ain't easy. It really isn't easy. Not only has he done it, but, well, I'll be very honest. When I was first asked to take a look at the film to see if I wished to be an executive producer of it, and I heard it was about a man dying, I thought, yeah, well, <laughs> after 10 minutes, I was ready to walk over broken glass to help this film. Mm -hmm. It is beautiful. It is poetic. It is joyous. Mm -hmm. The last ecstatic days. Mm -hmm. Thank you.